Okay. So far, we only have a single attendee who I don't know. So that's um, right. <laughs> well, actually, there Let's, is one. We'll, we'll get. We'll give him a minute. We'll give him a minute. We'll give, yes. So okay, good. <laughs> So, um, hi everybody. This is uh, this is Anton. That's uh, so we're gonna start. Maybe just give it the, the, you know two, three, four, five minutes, maybe maximum. So, um, uh, if it's a good time to uh, to do two things: one, get coffee, and b, make sure you're registered for voting if you're in the U.S. So, take that a little opportunity to do that. Um, again. Uh, we'll start in one, two minutes. So I'm actually going to go and refill my teacup and then we'll start. Yeah. And another thing you can do if you want uh, while you are, while we're waiting to start is there is a, a very short poll uh, that is uh, in the, uh, that, that we've created just to kind of give us some guidance for what we can do for uh, future webinars. So if you want to fill that out, that would be great too. Okay, so my clock shows it's uh, 102. So let's start at 105. So uh, three more minutes. Okay. And the poll is how do we access it? Is it? Yeah, it's... So oh yeah, the, the poll is uh, well at least on, on in my client it's at the bottom, uh, you know like where it lists the participants and you know the share screen button is and things like that. There's a polls polls slash quiz, quizzes button. Okay. Yes. So, um, yeah, that's good. Again, if you're just joining, we're just waiting for more people to get in. It's a biological event. Biological events never start on time. So just, um, I don't know, maybe in physics departments, things start on time, but definitely not in life science departments. Oh, uh, hmm. there's no button for, no poll for attendees. Let me, uh... Oh, wait. I can get to it if I go to more and click on polls. Ah, that's interesting that mine has the separate button. Right. So, so yeah, if you could take a look at under the, where the dot, dot, dot more is, uh, maybe there's something there. Oh no! Now uh, there's no no dot dot more either. Um, shoot, I I don't know what to do about that because. Did, uh, all right, let me ask this. Uh, uh, can somebody? Um, let's see. I don't know what I'm not sure what to do. Uh, I guess the question is, can anybody besides Anton and I see the poll? <laughs> yeah, let us know in the chat. Uh, okay, let me uh, let me go back to the um, that is that I did publish it. Let's see. Ah, um, suit. All you have is raise hand on. Okay, so I see the poll. Um, in the website where I created it, and it says status not launched, which obviously is the problem. Um, let's see. So 
So um, yeah. I'll start. This, this is, is one of five, and if you can figure, try to figure out while I'm going. So and then we'll. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why don't you go ahead and get started? I will mute so that I'm not not uh, <laughs> talking to myself. Okay. While um, while we're doing this. So again, thank you for participating. Uh, it's um, we are not yet advertising this very much uh, because we're still in the development period. But those of you who joined really have an opportunity to affect uh, the direction of this project because we will be asking for the poll and um, it's still it's still the beginning and it's easy to things in uh, to, to change things in the beginning you know once you start growing it becomes harder and harder to change things so it so we do need your feedback to make sure that we're going the right direction okay so uh, today I'm going to tell you um, our vision for integration between BRC analytic site and uh, Galaxy in the sense that you can run analysis workflows of different kinds. Today, I am going to show you how to run variation discovery workflow. I will do this on Plasmodium data. Uh, it's a general variation surveillance workflow of a type that, for example, you, you, know, you collect a million samples across various countries in Africa, for example, or in South America, you uh, generate Lumina or element data on these samples, and then you covariance and generate some nice reports, for example, which countries have which, var which variants and so on. So that kind of a workflow I'm gonna demonstrate today. Uh, the poll that uh, Scott is trying to figure out how to publish if we're not successful, we'll just send you a follow up with a link of some sort uh, is asking what other types of workflows you would like us to show. All right, so I'm going to start with sharing screen. Um, I'm going to start with this uh, with this step. So this is the same site I was showing you a few weeks ago when we, um, when we were running our first webinar. I was uh, telling you that it's gonna be changing. Um, it's possible that you might not notice any changes yet, uh, but again, it's an evolving target and the structure of this site will be, the way we present different genomes will be changing um, again in the next few weeks. So uh, today uh, I am going to be working with Plasmodium Vivex, which is uh, one of the, uh, causative agents uh, of malaria. Uh, just to remind you, um, this is, uh, so this is the BRC Analytics website. The core of this website is really the data, the types, different uh, organisms, different genomes that we're serving. This list of organisms was originally um, uh, copied, not copied from, uh, from ViewPathDB. So this was the list of organisms that they were maintaining. However, we are not in any way uh, restricted to these organisms. We are going to expand this in the, in the coming months. And the first uh, expansion that we're gonna do, we're gonna expand to other uh, pathogens, not necessarily eukaryotic. We will be expanding to uh, priority naiad pathogens, which are viral and bacterial. So we will see things like uh, avian influenza and pox and other things added here, along with all the uh, workflows um, that you will be able to run on this data. So uh, the uh, model for today's webinar is following. Suppose you are you're exploring some of the resources. In this case, again, I'm focusing on malaria uh, because it's an, it's an organism for which it's easy to get data. Also, uh, a lot of people I know here at Penn State work on malaria, so it's easy for me to get advice. Uh, but uh, the general strategy that I'm gonna show you today, it's applicable to any organism which we have there. So suppose uh, you, uh, you know, you're reading some papers which uh, show you, um, uh, data, for example, resequencing data for one of the uh, plasmodium pathogens, could be plasmodium falciparum, could be plasmodium vivax, and you want to reanalyze these data sets. Or maybe you have your own vivax data which you want to analyze. 
this is a kind of an example that I'm going to be running today. So I guess I should start, uh, you know, dancing around it. Let's just go to the, um, and in fact, I am showing you the wrong tab as usual. So uh, this is the tab I was going to show you. This is one of the resources which has lots of uh, plasmodium data. In this case, it's plasmodium resequencing data. It's a type of data which you do when you're doing um, epidemiological surveillance, which variants occur in which geographical locations and things like that. And that's a great resource because it has lots of data sets. So it's an example of an external resource which uh, provides, uh, provides access to data sets and what we do in the framework or BRC analytics will provide you with the means that you can actually analyze this data. Because resources like that, they just point you to the data. They don't necessarily provide you with tools to analyze the data. And where we come in, we provide you with tools and infrastructure, which you can use to analyze the data. Okay, so let's go to BRC analytics. I'm gonna just search, search for Vilex. Um, as in many cases, uh, for a given organism, you can have different strains. You can have geographical isolates. In this case, we have five. Um, this, uh, when we're going to have uh, a webinar maybe on viral data, you will see that it's much, much worse because for some uh, viral isolates, you have you know, thousands of, of potential isolates or strains. But in case of Vivex, it's not so bad. So uh, this is uh, a kind of a regardless whether you come to this list from us or from NCBI data sets or from EBI in Europe, at some point you sort of gonna have to make decision, all right, so I have these five genomes from five isolates. And for example, in, in this uh, webinar, I am going to um, do a resequencing analysis. So I have uh, samples from two sites in Gambia I will show you this, uh, these samples in just a few minutes. And I would like to see, is, is there any variation? Uh, are, in, in, in this case, I have two sites. I have southern sites and northern site, and I want to understand, are, are there any uh, genetic differences which differentiate these two geographic sites? So uh, conceptually, it's a very simple experiment. You take your Illumina or element reads, whatever you have, you map them to the genome, you call the variants. But against which genome would you map? So in this case, you have five. How do you know which one to pick up? Um, there are kind of different ways to answer that question. Uh, but uh, one, of the, one of the ways to uh, answer that question is just look at the basic quality statistics for these genomes. And um, the number of contigs is can be kind of a taken as an indirect measure of this. In the future releases of BRC analytics, which are coming up shortly, you will um, um, Okay, so I uh, thank you for pointing out that I'm again not sharing the right screen. Okay, so <laughs> please be more loud and uh, ping Scott or or, 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 uh, or me directly via chat. So I promise I'll stop doing that. Anyway, let me go back. So we are trying to replicate a resequencing experiment using Plasmodium Biovix data. So I went to BRC analytics site. I clicked on data sets. I searched for Biovix. And I have the list of five genomes. And the question I immediately have, which one is to, which one to pick? So uh, in order to make the decision, I need to have some insight into quality statistics for these genomes. Uh, right now, all I can operate is the number of contigs, uh, number of super contigs, number of chromosomes. So in general, uh, when you're dealing with genome assemblies, the smaller the number of contigs is the better. So hopefully you have smaller number of larger contigs, which uh, you know ultimately are assembled in scaffolds, and the ultimate scaffold is an entire chromosome. Um, in the future releases of BRC analytics, and by future I mean within again a few weeks from now, we will have more QC data here, because um, while number of contigs is, is a good proxy but we need to have more kind of a proper um, QC metrics here, such as, for example, N50 values. 
which is again tells you how large uh, chunks in your genome assembly are. Anyway, so based on this, probably the genome that I'm going to pick is going to be Plasmodium vivax, uh, well, or Plasmodium vivax, uh, PO1, which it, because it has the smallest number of contacts. So um, again, I, I want to, in this case, I have my own data, which I want to analyze using this framework. There are two components involved in this process. So the RC analytics side, which you have here, and we will also be using uh, a Galaxy instance, which is connected to this side. At this time, so let me switch and make sure that I um, switch the tabs too. I am going to be using the text uh, test instance of Galaxy, which is uh, which can be accessed at test.galaxyproject.org. Um, all I'm showing you is in alpha, so it's a very very early uh, functionality which we're developing as we speak. And again, the main purpose of this webinar is for you to give us feedback. Are we, are we going the right direction? Do you need uh, more workflows for different types of analysis and so on? But you can uh, you can do exactly the same that I'm doing here. This webinar will be recorded, so you will be able to rewatch that and sort of copy what I'm doing. But um, so for this webinar, I'm essentially going to use two tabs. One tab is going to be the BRC Analytics tab. The other tab is going to be uh, Test Galaxy tab. And the first thing I need to do is I need to log in into the Galaxy instance. So I'm just going to do that. Uh, if you have Galaxy accounts, you, you can use that. If you don't have Galaxy accounts, you can create them right now. I'm just going to use the Google login. So I'm going to click on sign in with Google. And I already uh, initialized this analysis. So, so I'm logged in. I have running uh, Galaxy test in one tab. And I have BRC analytics in the other tab. So right now I'm uh, in BRC analytics and I was showing in the previous webinar, we have three buttons here. We will have more buttons ultimately pointing us to different repositories. But at this point, we have buttons pointing to NCBI, to UCSC genome browser and this analyze button. What this analyze button does, it brings you to another page and that page shows the types of analyses that are available for that genome, for that organism. Because, you know, different organisms um, can be analyzed, can require different types of analysis. For example, in this case, uh, the, the, um, the samples for uh, Plasmodium vivax that were isolated were isolated from the host, uh, from from uh, from from, um, from malaria patients, so they were isolated in their haploid stage. So in this case, when we're going to be calling variants, we're going to call variants using a workflow which is specifically designed for calling variants in haploid systems, because the way you assess, for example, quality of variants, the way you score genotypes, is going to be different between haploid, diploid and God forbid polyploid organisms. But in this case, it's a haploid type of variant calling. It's the same uh, essential approach which you would use, for example, for bacteria uh, or for viral mixtures. The only difference here is that when you're calling variants in bacteria or in viruses, you're usually dealing with a single sequence uh, as a genome or in most cases. You know, COVID is a single sequence. Uh, salmonella genome is a single sequence. In the case of plasmodium, of course, you have multiple chromosomes, so, so you have multiple sequences. Anyway, um, at this point, we enabled three workflows on these on the on the plasmodium genomes, and they include variant calling, transcriptomics, and regulation. There will be multiple transcriptomics workflows as we go forward, because again, you can do RNA seq for. Uh, transcript discovery. You can do RNA seq for expression quantification. You can do single cell RNA seq. You can, and so on. And and the same is true for regulation. You can have classical chip seq types of analysis. You can have very simple attack seq types of experiments, cut and run, and so on. And we are planning to have workflows for all of these categories. 
this is again why the pool that we will hopefully be able to enable is important because that would tell us how to prioritize things. So today we're going to do variant calling. So I'm going to click on that analyze button. And when I do this, it will bring me to Galaxy. Uh, and the workflow, well, essentially what workflow is, it's a series of tools chained together. And of course they need inputs. So in case of variant calling, your inputs are, you really need three inputs. You need to have the genome sequence against, you which, against which you will map the reads. That's this thing here, genome FASTA. You need to have, um, um, are there any issues? Because I'm so carried away that I'm not looking at any chat or anything like this. Is everything okay? Scott, you don't see any emergencies. It's uh, no, it says still on the BRC analytics site. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna switch to all right. So, so when I click that analyze button, I was supposed to jump here, and okay. that's what happened. So again, when you are here and you click on analyze, once you click on analyze, you will be brought there. And <laughs> let me go back again. So this workflow requires three inputs: the sequence against which you will match, you will map the reads. It's right here. It's pre-filled for you with that particular genome version. You will need uh, information about genes because information about genes will. Uh, will let you decide whether, uh, for example, single nucleotide poly polymorphisms cause amino acid changes, or they don't cause amino acid changes, or they're outside of gene, uh, uh, or they're outside of genes altogether. So this will allow us to assign functional categories to variants, synonymous, non-synonymous, and so on. And finally, we need some data. Uh, and so both uh, genome sequence and gene information is pre-filled. By, but the data, this is something in this case you need to provide. So I need to provide. And so uh, in this case, I will upload data. I have some data sets already. So I will choose local files. I have a few of them. And I am going to click start. Let me explain what this is. It's a typical resequencing data set in a sense that I have two samples. They're called South and North. And this is paired end data. So I have forward reads and reverse reads. Uh, again, this workflow is designed to, um, to work on Illumina data or on more rare at this point, but maybe quite common in the future. Uh, element biosciences types of data set. These are two Illumina and element biosciences are two instruments that, that generate short reads and you can do this in paired end orientation and they generate quite a few of them. So in this case, we have two samples. The reason we have two samples is because I wanna finish this webinar at some point. So, so, so we're gonna, uh, this analysis will be relatively fast. But once we start running, I'm going to show you some real examples where we have thousands of these data sets. So, uh, for example, for COVID surveillance, we analyzed uh, hundreds of thousands of data sets in exactly the same fashion. Okay, so what's happening here? I just uploaded these data sets from my computer into Galaxy. And I can close that. And I have them here in my history. So I have four of them, south, north, uh, and F indicates forward reads, R indicate uh, reverse reads, and you can see that they're not sorted, they're sort of mixed. So before I can actually uh, use this workflow, I need to uh, make sure that uh, I organize them in so-called collection. So um, in this case, I have four data sets and four data sets is not a big deal. You can click four times, but if you have 100,000 data sets, it's really, it becomes it's kind of a difficult to, to deal with them individually. So in Galaxy, we have this concept of data set collections and data set collection is essentially a, a container in which you can put any, any number of data sets, but from the standpoint of your interface, you will see here, you're just dealing with one thing. 
So I'm just going to select all of these data sets. And for all selected, I am going to build a list of data set pairs. If you're starting to get confused, again, this will be recorded. And there is a number of very detailed tutorials on Galaxy training site, which explain all these steps. Plus, please, uh, at the end of this webinar, we'll, we'll uh, tell you about all the help and support channels that you can use. So um, I'm going to build um, um, a container, a collection. And once I click on that, it brings me to this wizard. So remember that all my forward reads, they have capital F in them. And all my reverse reads, they have capital R in them. So here, and at, at that side, I have forward reads. And that side, I have reverse reads, so I can pair them. And ultimately, I'm going to call this container that I'm creating something. Let's call this reads, for example. And I'm just going to go and create that collection. You will see what will happen is that the individual data sets will disappear. And what will remain is just one thing. In this case, that one thing contains two samples. Uh, so um, Gambia North, Gambia South. And if you click on each sample, you will see that it contains four versions in reverse reads. Um, but uh, if you can imagine a collection with, for example, entire surveillance of the entire African continent with hundreds of thousands of samples, it will look exactly the same. It just is going to be a list with you know, 100,000 pairs. Right now, I'm just dealing with two. And you can see that once I did this, uh, the workflow interface refreshed. So now I have all the inputs set. So I can just click around workflow. And once I start doing this, what happens is that uh, this is something with a fancy name, uh, workflow invocation uh, view. And it shows you the workflow. So this is the workflow we're going to be running with all the steps. And as our uh, as, as Galaxy progresses through these steps, they will become green, as you can see here. So just to explain you what's happening here is that the first thing we are running is FastP. FastP is a tool which um, gives you, assesses general quality of the reads. Actually, at the end of this workflow, we'll be able to look at the report. Um, I'll explain the report once we look at it. Um, the FASTP also does some basic trimming. For example, if you have some, for example, if you had, I don't know, Nextera a library preparation protocol and you forget to, to, to chop the adapters, FASTP will try to do that. So this is the first step. The next step, the, uh, the reads which are filtered by FASTP are then mapped against this genome that you provided using, in this case, BWAMM. And then we do a few, um, a few, how to say, um, manipulations with the map data. We uh, ensure that we only retain reads with a good mapping quality. And we also retain reads which are properly mapped, meaning that the forward read looks at the reverse read. We then um, eliminate um, duplicates. In this case, PCR duplicates, so reads which are piled with exactly the same coordinates. So the big problem in this data set. And then we go into the entire variant calling with um, read realignment. So ensuring that gaps are padded in a consistent way. We call variants using a tool called low freak. And this is the difference between, for example, um, haploid variant calling and diploid variant calling. So the low freak is a very simplistic variant caller. It looks, it does not consider surrounding haplotypes. It surrounding haplotype neighborhood. It just deals with each nucleotide as a separate entity. And it does not try to assign uh, homozygotes or heterozygotes because it doesn't make any sense in this case. Um, so it just gives you uh, uh, information about do we have a difference at that site? And if we do have a difference, what is the frequency of that difference? Meaning among all the reads covering this site, how many of the reads have an alternative allele versus the reference? So while it's cooking, um, are there any questions? 
and I don't think so. So yeah, there, there are no open questions. But since since we are waiting for it to cook a little bit, I will mention. Apparently, I have the ability to make polls in Zoom. I just don't have the ability to publish polls in Zoom. I'll, I'll sort that out hopefully by the next time we do a webinar. Uh, I did create a, a survey, which hopefully I do have permission to, to create. Um, that a survey is something you get as when the webinar ends. So uh, it basically has the same questions. It's basically, what topic would you like to do for the next uh, webinar and whether or not you'd be willing to share sample data? Uh, that's it's very it's a very simple poll. So anyway, you, you, you'll get that you'll get that at the end, hopefully. By sample data, I mean if you have any data you want to analyze, uh, then if you if you can share it with us, then we can run a webinar on your data. I think that might be exciting. So you can see that at least in, in two samples. So we essentially uh, more or less done. So we're getting very close to the end of this. Um, so uh, let's look at the at the final data. So the if you have not seen how Galaxy does analysis before, uh, this part of Galaxy interface is called history. This is where you put your input data, and this is where all the transformations you do to these data sets occur. For example, if you map the reads, for example, as in this case you run BWA on these reads, uh, the resulting BAM files will be in that history as well, and you can uh, have as many histories as you like because they are sort of like your workspaces. So for example, in my case, I have I have a few and I can switch between them. For example, this is a history with a previous run on this workflow. I can also show you, let me switch to another tab from a um, our production Galaxy instance. And that shows you the same analysis, but in this, in this case done on 214 uh, Plasmodium Vivex data sets. This is essentially all the data that we found um, uh, that we found in the um, malaria gen site. But it's um, it actually shows you that you have 1,800 uh, worldwide samples. But when you actually filter this down on quality, you end up with about 217 good data sets. We can have additional webinar on how you filter published data on quality to decide if you want to supplement your analysis with, with, with existing data sets. So um, in, this, in this case, uh, you can see that uh, this generated about 178. Uh, so in this case, we analyzed 178 data sets. I can find you for later webinar some of the examples of our uh, COVID histories, which have tens to hundreds of thousands of data sets. So this scales scales very well. So going back to what we have, if we, we can look at that data uh, and you will see that in this form, essentially what you get is a final report in which you have the sample, sample ID. In this case, it's, uh, it's a Northern sample. If you scroll down, you will see a Southern sample and the information about where these variants actually occur. So this is one of the chromosomes of Vivex. This is positioned in that chromosome. And we can look at some variants which are actually inside the genes to provide you with all this information to which codon is changed, are there any amino acid changes and so on. And this is the kind of a data that you can you then feed into visualizations. You can have visualizations which, for example, show you the graphs of allele frequencies, allele frequencies across geographic sites, and so on. And for every workflow in BRC Analytics, we will have either a report or pre-canned visualizations, which would allow you to you know, not look at the tab delimited files like here, but actually look at uh, explore data in, um, in interactive dashboards. This is going to be subject of next webinar, but in order to do next webinar, we need your help in picking a workflow that we're gonna use, because of course it will be different visualizations. This is variant calling for cut and run types analysis. You will have, you will need to, uh, completely different visualizations. Um, one thing I also wanted to show you is that one of the outputs of this workflow is, um, 
information about how good the data were. So in this case, we had two data sets. These data sets were not particularly large because I downsampled them for this webinar because I wanted this to run fast. Um, and it just uh, gives you some idea what data you're dealing with. It's important, uh, regardless whether you're using your own data, sometimes when you have your own data, you also don't know what the quality is, but it's even more important when you're using data from somebody else. In this case, this is data from public repositories and public repositories contain a lot of um, bad stuff. So for example, if you're analyzing all plasmodium falciparum data from the say, all the sequencing plasmodium falciparum data from SRA, you will find a significant percentage of that will not be good. There will be either a lot of low quality reads or contamination with something, contamination with adapters, for example, and so on. So it's very important to do a QC assessment of your data. And in this case, that's what this report does. It, it essentially tells you how many reads were filtered out, gives you all sorts of statistics, such as insert size distribution, this is paired end data, uh, sequence quality distribution, GC content dynamics, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, okay, let's let's check again if we have any questions. No. So just to recap, what I was doing is I was starting from um, data sets page in BRC Analytics. I was choosing in this case particular organisms that a particular organism that I that I care about. Um, I chose a better genome here, although I must tell you that from my initial assessment, all Vivex genomes are not very good. Falciparum genomes are better, but also not perfect. And I clicked analyze button to see what kind of choices I have for the analysis. And I chose the variant calling, which I did on the data, which my, my data, which I uploaded uh, from my computer. Um, there are many ways in which you can get data into Galaxy. Uh, and for example, uh, if you are reanalyzing published data, the chances are that these data sets are already in repositories such as either Short Data Archive at NCBI or at the uh, European um, um, Nucleotide Archive. And you can get them directly by their accession numbers. So for example, in in my, in my example where I analyzed a lot of data sets, all I did is I obtained a list of accession numbers from NCBI. You can go to NCBI, select a study, then load list of accessions. And I gave that list to Galaxy. It uploaded all the data and then it ran the workflow on the data. And you can use the same idea for any other workflow, of course. Okay, so I wanted to leave, I don't know, five, 10 minutes for questions. So um, please go ahead if you have any. In addition to questions, of course, you can uh, provide thoughts about, um, you know, like what you think about this workflow or this, this kind of approach you know, let, let, you know, give us, give us some feedback. Again, the approach is that this list will be evolving. So right now we have 744. We're probably gonna have thousands next time um, because we're gonna include, we're not gonna restrict ourselves to ViewPathDB data. Uh, and for every organism, you will be able to get an understanding which genomes are available to this organism. You will get an idea about how good these genomes are. And then you will be able to get to analyze page, which will show you workflows specific to this organism. Again, if it's a deployed organism, then the workflow, which we just ran, doesn't make sense on it. So this will all be uh, pre-canned for you. Uh, and we will 
slowly start developing some tutorials which are specific to uh, to BRC analytics uh, types of uh, analysis flow. So we're going to do something that we similar to what we did in the beginning. Let's let's have you know two three let's do five minutes and then we'll just end. So if you want to ask questions, please. So did we succeed with the poll or will we send this later? Yeah, so so apparent like is a, apparently I can create a poll. I just can't publish the poll, which is okay. uh, lovely. Um, but the other option that Zoom provides is an end of uh, an end of webinar survey. Uh, so I created a survey with the same questions that I had in the poll, and hopefully, when people leave, they will get this survey. But uh, even if not, uh, I can I can send that survey basically to everybody who attended and other people. Can, can, we, so, share a, can we share a link to the survey right now on the chat? So we don't let's have see. to I don't, uh, Let's see, probably. Let's... Oh, actually, we do have a question. Uh, so Kristen asks, uh, in um, how far can you move results from one analysis? Oh, how, how can I think it's how can you move analysis from one pipeline to another results from one analysis pipeline to another? So if you have a variant calling with results on variants and specific genes, can I use that subset then to intersect with RNA-seq um, or ATAC-seq uh, pipelines, that sort of thing? It's an excellent question. So yes, um, let me jump here. Um, so this workflow provides two outputs. One of these outputs is, uh, is TSV file, which I was just showing you. Uh, this file is very good for generating reports. Again, next webinar, I'll show you some colorful interactive reports that you can run over this. Uh, however, it also produces output in a VCF format. Uh, which is uh, not as pretty to look at, but it's good for, uh, because lots of tools, uh, you know, you see a format is a positional format, so it has coordinates. And so you can intersect, for example, uh, variants in VCF format against results from other analysis. So suppose you are running a cut and run analysis on, again, on Plasmodium Vivex, and in this analysis, you identified some regions that you're interested in. You can simply intersect the regions that you're interested in from your, for example, cut and run experiments with the VCF file generated with this workflow. And to do that, you have, I don't know how many hundreds of tools here, but I would probably do this with um, bad uh, tools intersect. So, um, Um, yeah, so this is this is the tool, this is the tool I'll, I will be using for that. Um, and uh, what this tool does, it takes two data sets. Well, in this in the lingo of this tool, it's data set A and data set B. This data set can be in a variety of formats. 
uh, as as well as VCF, for example. And I was also one of my data sets will be a result of this workflow. My other data set will be a result of cut and run workflow. And I'll just run the intersection and, and look at these results. So you can you have uh, you can um, you have a choice of a lot of tools here for doing that. But in this case, you are dealing with genomic coordinates and probably one of the best toolkits for, for dealing with genomic coordinates is, is a bad tool suite from Aaron Kuhn. Does that answer your question? But that's a great question. So if we can get more questions like this, that would be great. Yeah, I'll also, uh, so I'll mention that um, I found the silly launch button for the poll. So now there is a poll, I think. We'll see. I um, <laughs> so, that's, so that's good. So uh, so now you actually, you've got a poll and a survey that have the same questions in it. Okay. <laughs> oh, but Kristen did say yes. Thanks. That answered her question. Yes. All right. So if... If there are no more questions, we can just finish. So we'll announce, again, uh, the, the point of doing these webinars is, at least my hope, was to keep community somewhere aware of what's happening. Uh, it's a five-year project. We started two months ago. So we already have a lot. But uh, I think, you know, devil is in the details. And as time goes, we were working on polishing these pieces so it all flows together uh, flows together nicely um, but so things that I'm presenting to you today are were just enabled and so they will be hardened uh, as we go this is again why we're not advertising this yet to a very wide uh, community we just want to have kind of a small group which uh, checks, keeps us in check, and uh, gives us some feedback on the development. So, so you guys are the part of that elite group, so please keep coming back to these webinars. All right, if there are no more questions, then we might as well stop. Uh, but please fill the poll before you leave, because that would seriously affect what we're going to be talking about next time. All right. All right. I think we can call it. I think we can call it a, a morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Wherever you are. Yes. Yes. Thanks, everybody. Have a good rest of your day. <laughs>